book of 2 Peter chapter number 1, 2 Peter chapter number 1, read just a few verses to you here this morning, and amen, preach to you what the Lord has laid upon our heart, and I thought about this much this week, and the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, I believe that what I'm going to preach to you about this morning is going to be even more realized. Uh, because we're getting close to the coming of the Lord, it's simply by that. Uh, I enjoy fellowship at the house of God. I enjoy being with God's people whenever I have the opportunity. That's something that to me is uh, more valuable than any, anything else that, that you can find is good fellowship with God's people. Uh, a, lot of, you know, a lot of places I'm around, there's just no fellowship. But I thank the Lord this morning that I come to God's house and I can feel the presence and the fellowship of not only the Holy Spirit of God, but of God's people. Uh, if there's one person in here that, th this morning that has something against another person in this building, I don't know nothing about it. And I don't believe it's so. I believe this is people that love the Lord. And I believe this is people that love each other. And I'm glad, thank God, for, for the, the presence and the preciousness of the house of God. Let's begin reading with verse number one, and I'm going to read three or four verses, and then we'll have a word of prayer. Second Peter chapter number one, verse number one. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our, of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. Lord, I pray that you would bless it, God. And Lord, we know you said your word would not return void, but would go and do that which is supposed to and accomplish that, God, which is your will. And I pray this morning that the word of God, Lord, would speak to our hearts. And God, I pray that you draw us near to thee, Lord, we're living in the last days of time. Lord, we say it, we know it to be true, and we believe by faith that you're coming for us soon. And I pray, Lord, until you come, Lord, you'd help us to realize how precious you are to us. And Lord, how dear God's salvation is and how dear our fellowship is. Bless us now around the word of God. Help us say nothing contrary to thy will, but all that we say be to thy glory. Help us, Lord. We need your help. Lord, forgive us and cleanse us, Lord, and make us fit. And God, to open the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. In this four, four verses of 2 Peter chapter number 1, we find the word precious twice in these first four verses. Now, I want to preach to you a little, one, a little while this morning on great and precious things. Great and precious things. Now, it's, it is in this world that we live in, we begin to understand that those things that are dear to us and th those things that are near to our hearts, we deem them as being precious things to us. They are things that uh, we, you know, we enjoy every day, the precious things. I think about these little children around here this morning, and uh, you know, sometimes I think they don't hear a thing I'm saying, but I know better. Because I raised three kids, and sometimes when I thought they didn't listen or didn't hear, they were hearing more than I thought. But they're precious. These little children around here are something that's precious. Uh, they're precious to the eyes of, of people, and they're more precious to the eyes of the Lord. They're precious children to Him. The Bible is full of precious things, great and precious things. Many times, 76 times, if you look up the word, that word precious is spoken in the word of God. 
Sometimes it's talking about gold and silver, and sometimes it's talking about other things. But here it's talking about, in verse number 1, it's talking about precious faith. Your faith is precious. Without precious faith, you and I would be lost without God. And if you're lost this morning with the precious faith that you can put in the Lord Jesus Christ, then he'll save you by his grace. Precious faith. And then in verse number 4, we find that uh, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises. So there's many in Scripture of precious things. That word precious means valuable. It means costly. And listen, the things that God has given to us by way of salvation are precious, costly things. Salvation is something that's precious and it costs the dear Savior his life. So we know that it is precious, it is beloved, it is honored, uh, uh, precious is esteemed, it is uh, uh, preciousness in your reputation that you have. A good reputation is something that's precious and something to be guarded. A good name is something that's precious and something to be God guarded. All the promises, number one, all the promises in the Word of God are precious. Amen? Everything that God gave us in his word, every promise that he made. Now, I've not looked to see how all, all them that there are. Someone numbered them, and it's up into the thousands of, of precious things, of, of things that God has promised us in his word that are listed in scripture. I don't know all of those, but every day I realize that the precious promises of God are made real to me. I mean, I got up this morning. Amen. God, God let me get up this morning and breathe his air and see the, the pretty sunshine outside. And a beautiful day it is. And this day is precious to me because I have no promise of another one. Amen. Amen. This day should be precious to you because you have no promise of tomorrow. The promises of God are precious. The promises of God are true. Everything that God promises as a precious promise is something that you can, can uh, believe in. Uh, a good deal of politics is going on in the country to, to, you know, this week. I'll be glad when they take all the signs down. A uh, fellow the other day, he said I, he said I was down uh, tuning up my deer rifle, and he said I didn't have nothing to shoot at. He said, I just stopped on the way down the road and picked me up a couple of signs off the road and took them down to, pra to target practice all day. I thought, that's a good use, amen, good use for it. But you know, the day that we're living in, there's a lot of, there's a lot of false things that will be said. There was a lot of lies that's going to be told, plain and simple. And many of the promises that people, politicians, will make to you between now and now will, will never come to pass. I guess that's what you have to be to be a politician. I don't know. But anyway, the promises of God, you can rest assured, are true and faithful promises. They're precious promises that are true, and they're precious promises that cannot be broken. Did you know God promises you something? He's God, and beside him there's none else, and he will not, cannot, will not break his promises made to you. He's promised that he'd never leave me nor forsake me. And guess what? He has never left me nor has he forsaken me. Amen. Now the devil will come along once in a while and he'd say, Well, the, the Lord's done left you, but I have the promise of the word of God. That no matter how I feel or what the devil says, amen, his word is precious, his promise is precious, and he will not leave me nor will he forsake me. Amen. amen. Y'all liven up a little bit or I'm going to have to come down there. Amen. The world ain't come to an end yet, amen. Y'all breathing this morning, God's promises are precious that cannot be broken. God's promises are precious and they're to all who will believe him. Did you know that even the unbeliever, the most ungodly, the, the lost man that you say, you say, well, what promise do they have? They have the promise of salvation if they call upon Jesus, amen. They have that promise. It is their promises, and it's true to the lost man. But guess what? The promises of the Word of God and the precious promises of Jesus are promised to me, and they're promised to all that will believe. He promises that. 
Many times I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll go with you. In the darkest of the day, he said, I'll be there. Yea, though through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I go, I fear no evil. The promises of God are precious and they're true. Then the promises of God are eternal promises. For eternity, he promised me that I could be with him if I would trust him. I did. And guess what? For eternity, I will be with the Lord. They're true and precious promises of God that are precious. Then number two, the seed of God's word is precious. The seed of the word of God is precious. In Psalms chapter number 126 in verse number 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. The word of God, the seed of the word of God is precious. Now, I see in this scripture, in this psalm, that it is given a picture of a sower going forth to sow. And listen, I, you know... I, I don't have enough room to raise a garden right now. Uh, but when I did, I think my harvest would have been greater if I would have taken this approach when I sowed my garden. The idea is here that that sower would take his seed. And that sower, in, 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 the, in those days, they would plant. And they would plant to specifically not for a hobby, but they would plant for a harvest that would sustain them they depended upon the food that came from the ground uh, for them to live. That was their survival. My grandma and grandpa, they, they depended a lot upon what they grew for what they would have to eat. They were, you know, they wasn't no grocery store to run to and buy a loaf of bread. You know, there were things like that that didn't happen. They would raise their own wheat and take it and have it, you know, have it ground out and the corn to make the meal out of. And they lived like that. So it was important to them that a good harvest occurred. Now, I'll tell you, if I had, when I was raised in the garden, if I had taken this approach, my harvest might have been much better. I planted some beans one time. My grandma said, them beans won't have no beans on them. And uh, I, she said, they ain't going to have many beans on them. And, of course, I said, why not? She said, you planted them at the wrong time. And so I thought, well, we'll see. So I just put them things in the ground. You know, I always planted when I had the best time to do it, when the ground was dry. And I planted those beans, and I planted a big, long row, probably a 100-foot row of greasy beans. And I planted those beans, and, and they come up. And I thought, well, they come up good. About every one of them came up. So I, I side-dressed them, you know, with, uh, 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 with uh, a fertilizer. And, I, you know, I put soda on them after, and the boy, they were growing good. And I hoed them out, kept the weeds out of them. And, man, those beans got to growing. And I went out there, and I staked those beans up. And I thought, well, I don't know if my grandma knows what she was talking about. And I got, I got them things up, and they, they spread out everywhere. They were staked up. They were pulling down the stakes, you know. And, and I got to watching them beans, and I oh, the here they started blooming. I thought, man, I'm going to have a ton of beans on these, on these bean vines. And so I saw a few coming along while I was gone and didn't get back over. I thought, I better get back over and pick my beans. So I went back over and picked my beans, and I got me baskets, and I... When I got through picking that row of beans, I didn't have a half a bushel of beans out of all them beans. Now, what was wrong? Well, I did all I could do. They bloomed, and they bloomed beautiful, thousands of blooms. But they never produced nothing. Now, I don't know why. To this day, I don't know why, except God was showing me a lesson that sometimes you better listen to people and number two, not every seed that you sow is going to bear fruit, but some of it will. Now, some of there was beans on some of them, and I ate the ones and enjoyed ones. But, you know, I thought, after that, I thought, you know, if I'd have listened to somebody, those beans might have been better. Now, also this, if I'd have known what I know now, when I was sowing them beans, I'd have said, Lord, I know the time not right, but, Lord, bless these beans. It's the only time I've got to, I've got to plant them. Lord, bless them. Now, that's what this psalm is talking about. Those, heart, those sowers would go out to sow the seed, and they would sow that seed, and they would pray, and they would even weep over their sowing, so that, you know, uh, praying that God, please bless this 
what I'm sowing and bless it and help it to come up and help me to have a good harvest. And the Bible promises that if you'll bear, you know, that if you'll weep and, and uh, plant those seeds with, with uh, your confidence in God and your trust in God. Now, see, this is talking about natural seed. But I'll tell you something. God's Word's true. God's Word's precious. And the Word of God being the seed of God is precious. And if you and I will sow the seed of the Word of God to people then and pray over that and weep over that, I believe we'll see a harvest of souls. Amen? Amen? Amen. You know what it is today? We don't want to do much sowing. A lot of people like to harvest. A lot of people like to to. Uh, uh, be the picker of the fruit, but not many people want to do the labor, don't want to do the hard work, don't want to sow the seed, don't want to plow the ground. But before a soul can be saved by the grace of God, there must be a seed planted, amen? And the precious promise of the Word of God tells us that the seed of God's Word is precious. Now, what makes the qualities and, the, and the, what makes the success of a sower? Well, they go forth, first of all. And friend, I'll tell you today, if you've got lost loved ones that don't know the Lord, if somebody don't go to them, then they'll never receive the seed of the Word of God and they'll never get saved by God's grace. If somebody don't go forth and sow the seed. I told you about the missionary earlier, Brother Fanning. He and his wife went, and I, met, I remember when they went. We were one of the first churches to take them on as a missionary. And they went to uh, Bolivia, and they began to work and began to give their lives to that work and to that mission work. And they sowed the seed, and they built churches, and they won souls to the Lord. But do you know what? If they hadn't gone, would the seed of, uh, that they sowed ever got? No, it would never gotten sowed. Someone has to go and sow the seed. Not everybody has the opportunity and the privilege to be raised up in Madison County, North Carolina, where their seed is plentiful and where the seed is sowed. But I'll tell you something, friend, there's places around this world that have never heard the preaching of the Word of God. They've never saw the seed of, of the Word of God in salvation. Don't know what it is. Somebody's got to go. Somebody's got to go forth. And bear that precious seed to a lost and to a dying world. Somebody's got to go forth. Then someone also has to go forth. But there's got to be some weeping done. There's got to be, there's got to be some burden on people's heart to go and win. So when's the last time you wept over a lost person going to hell? When's the last time that you got under such a burden for someone that's going to die and go to hell without God? And without hope, when's the last time that you actually got under such a burden for that that you would take them to God and say, Lord, please save them. God, please save them before they go to hell. God, you love them. I love them. God, please don't let them die and go to hell. And you had a burden for a lost person. See, what's wrong? We've got, we've got hardened to the things of God and we've got hardened to the fact that people are dying and going to hell. And our vision is not upon that any longer, but it's upon many times the pleasure of the world, the things of the world, and what we can gain out of the world rather than, listen, this world is only a short time. You're, you're here for a little while. This lady celebrating her 100th birthday is rare. You're here for a little time. And if I live to be 100, I only have uh, years to go. <laughs> Amen. Listen, and this first years has gone by pretty quickly, and I'm sure the last will go by even faster. I want to tell you something. We've only got a short period of time as sowers, so let, please, I'm begging you, in the last days, pray for this preacher that he'd get a burden for lost people and pray for yourselves that we'll get a burden for lost people. I don't know how many people around in this community that if I went out and started preaching on the steps might hear my voice and get under conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. I don't know all these folks. I don't know their hearts. I don't know who's within the distance of this church that if I go over here right now and I open the door and I open the screen door and I say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't know who's lost out there that might hear my preaching and get saved. But there is, a, there is people around this church 
that are lost and going to hell without God. Wouldn't it be a shame for them to go to hell in the, in the hearing distance of Gables Creek Baptist Church? Oh, Lord, help us. God, help us to be under a burden. Help us that we would sow the precious seed of the Word of God. And if you go forth weeping over lost people, and if you go forth weeping that people will get saved, you say, Preacher, I just don't have a burden. Listen, we need to get a burden. We need to pray, God, show us people dying and going to hell without God. Everybody bow your head just a minute. While your head's bowed, you ask the Lord, say, Lord, show me one lost person that's going to hell that I know. Like that, God showed me somebody. Now think about it, friend. If they don't get saved, they're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. They're going to go to hell without hope and without God. And God may have laid them upon your heart that you might get a burden for them, that you might win them to the Lord. Everybody look up. Now, friend, if God just laid somebody on your heart, it's your responsibility to carry the seed of the Word of God to them. You say, preacher, their family, they won't listen to me. It doesn't relieve you of the responsibility of telling them anyway. There's a man on my heart right now. I don't know how in the world to get to him. I'm praying for him. I'm asking God to help him. He tells me he's too mean to get saved. He tells me he's done too much and that he's ready to die and that, you know, that he don't, he's not afraid to die, but he's, he don't know what's going to happen to him when he dies. That's scary, friend, because he's not that healthy. Amen. God, help me to have a burden. I, I told him, I said, can I take you out and buy you supper? He likes to eat like I do. And sometimes that's the best way to get something to somebody is do something they like to do as long as it's not sinful. And you get around them and just, just get a conversation going about eternal things and where they're going to spend eternity. You say, they'll never do anything with me again. It's your responsibility and my responsibility to tell people that they need the Lord. Amen. You know what? Nobody wants to tell no more. God, help us to be under a burden for lost people that we might weep and that we might, that we might call on God so somebody don't go to hell. Amen. This young man got saved a few weeks back. What would have happened to you, young man? Where would you have went if you hadn't got saved? Where would you have went when you died if you hadn't got saved? You'd have went to hell. He knows that, but now where are you going because you got saved? Hey, hallelujah to God. Hey, say that real loud, son. He's going to heaven. Hey, man. You know why? Because somebody had a burden for that young man. I didn't know him. I mean, I knew him, but I didn't know him. Like Somebody had a burden for him. Somebody prayed, Lord, save my grandbaby. Lord, save my grandson. Lord, save my child. God, save, that, save my friend. Somebody had a burden for that young man, and he got saved. Amen. Now, what about your children? Now, I was raised in a good home. My mom and daddy, faithful as they be, took me to church. Your mom and daddy, faithful as they be, took you to church. And... That wasn't what got me saved, though, my friend. I had a praying grandma, and I'm, my grandma's gone on to be with the Lord. My grandpa, they're all gone on to be with the Lord. But I know one thing. My grandma was a praying woman, and I promise you, she prayed, Lord, save my grandbabies. Don't let them die and go to hell without you. And I had a praying mama that said, God, save my sons that they don't go to hell without you. And I sat under a preacher that cared something about me. I sat under a preacher that cared enough to tell me the truth. And as a little... As a little boy, I got saved in the grace of God. Prayers is answered. And hallelujah, because somebody bore the seed. Somebody brought me the precious seed of the word of God. I got saved by the grace of God. And I'm not going to hell. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all ain't a bit excited about that, are you? Boy, I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited that I don't have to go to hell. Amen. And if you don't have to go to hell, you ought to be excited. Amen. You say, well, preacher, I don't know what else to do. Pray. You pray. You pray. Say, God, give me a burden. God, let me. That person that came to your heart. That person that came to your heart is someone God's put on your mind to tell them about Jesus. 
And I don't know who it is. It may be a, a child. It may be your son. Maybe your daughter. Maybe a grandchild. Maybe maybe somebody at work. Maybe a friend. But now the burden of responsibility is upon you to tell them about the Lord. What will you do with that? Will you tell them? Or will you stand before God having not told them and have their blood upon you because you didn't honestly tell them that you must be born again? It's precious. The Word of God is precious. The seed of the Word of God is precious. And if you weep and you have a burden for lost souls, then you'll come forth bearing precious seed, and that precious seed that is harvested will be someone that comes to know the Lord and gets saved. That's the harvest. The fruit of a Christian, friend, is another Christian. You plant an apple tree, and it grows what? Peaches. No, it grows apples. Now, I've got one in the yard that has never grown an apple, and guess what's going to happen to that thing? It's getting cut out. Been three years now and it's not had one apple on. I'm cutting it down. I'm going to get rid of it because it don't bear fruit. A friend, a child of God, if you're a child of God, there'll be some fruit in your life. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, uh, uh, long suffering, joy, uh, meekness, happiness. Those things are the fruit of the Spirit living in you. You have those, but you need some fruit of another Christian, and that is another Christian. You need some fruit uh, of yourself that you have. Want somebody to the Lord that if you witness to somebody and you've told them how to got saved and they've got saved by the grace of God, I don't have a lot of fruit. I'll be the first to tell you. I've got some fruit, but I don't have enough. I want a few people to the Lord, but not near enough because the world is going to hell and who cares? Precious is the word of God. Precious is the... Is the, is the uh, Word of God that comes to people's hearts and they're convicted because of the precious Word of God, the precious seed. And when that precious seed is sown, it bringeth forth a great harvest. What else is precious? And I'm moving right along. Number, number three, the trial of your faith is precious. 1 Peter 1, 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes though it be tried with fire, might be found to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Genuine faith is more precious than gold. See, gold wouldn't get me to God. Precious things, precious metals, precious money of this world wouldn't get me to, you wouldn't get me to God. The Bible tells me that the word of God, that precious things from him, that my faith in God is more precious than gold. Amen. Why? Because gold wouldn't get me to God. Everything that you deem dear in this life will never get you to God. It must be Jesus and his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. It must be your faith in him. Listen, friend, if you didn't have faith to believe Jesus could save you when he did, you'd still be lost without God, without hope. Man, your, your faith is precious. Think about it a minute. How did you have enough faith? The, the faith of a child is of the faith of a child. You heard the word. You believed. Simple faith. You believed and God saved you. That's precious, my friend. The Bible don't say we have to go do this, that, and whatever else and have this much money and have this much pre prestige and have this kind of a, a attitude about us. God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Your faith in him is precious faith. We should thank the Lord for our faith that he has imparted to us that we believe and that we trust him. Our faith is, is, uh, is genuine and these other things cannot... Satisfy your soul. I know a lot of people that have faith in the stock market. It's up and down like a yo-yo. I know people that have faith in their ability to earn much money. It can all be gone in just a moment. When they die, it's not going with them. And I know, you know, I know a lot of people that do a lot of things to satisfy their soul, but nothing will ever satisfy their soul like Jesus. Amen. 
Nothing will ever fill that deep, dark longing down in your soul except Jesus. And when he moves in, friend, you're satisfied. Amen? Satisfaction comes from your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Gold and silver cannot strengthen your soul. Genuine faith does just exactly that. It strengthens your soul. And it strengthens your belief and your faith in him. And then we see, number four, the blood of Christ is precious. Amen. I'm glad for the blood of Christ, the Son of Jesus, only, God's only begotten Son, who gave His life and shed His blood for me. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. But what? But by His grace, because of not by, the, not by the blood of bulls or lambs or any other thing, but with his precious blood he gave for me that I might be saved. Amen. His blood's precious. Over the years of time, thousands and thousands of gallons of blood, thousands and thousands of animals had been sacrificed to atone for sin for a little while. But then Jesus came in that one precious Lamb of God, that one precious Son of God, that Jesus was, was God's only Son. And God said it's going to take more than the blood of bulls and goats. It's going to take more than the, than the, than the sacrifices of man for them to be able to enter heaven. It's got to be something. And God knew, God knew in his heart, God knew all the time that the only thing that was going to satisfy and the only thing that was going to fulfill the law was his own sinless, perfect, darling, precious son. And he was willing to give his precious son so that you and I might have precious faith in him and live forever. The blood of Jesus Christ is precious. Amen. There's enough of it, amen, to save everyone that's walking on planet earth today, everyone that ever has walked, and everyone that ever will walk. His blood is precious. The precious blood of Christ has redeeming power. It redeems us from the law. Through Christ, our, the law has been fulfilled for you and I, and we don't have to fulfill the law. He did it for us through His precious blood. The precious blood of Christ has cleansing power. All my sins were dark. All my sins upon me were black. I was dirty and filthy and sin, but then the red blood of Jesus, amen, washed me whiter than snow. I'm glad for the precious blood of the Lamb of God. His blood is precious. We walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Friend, today, are you, are you under the blood? Are you under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? And if you are, is Jesus precious to you? <clears throat> is Jesus precious to you? Is he, is, listen... Does Jesus mean more to you than the world does? Does Jesus mean more to you than anything else that you know of? Does he mean more to you than anything? Is he Listen, when you lay down at night to go to, is Jesus precious on your heart? When you, when you wake up in the morning, is Jesus precious on your heart? Or is it the things of the world? Is it the things that, that you've got to deal with every day? I'm telling you, if Jesus comes first, everything else, amen, will not have much effect on you. Amen. If you know Jesus, you know him. And when he's first, amen, everything else comes second. Amen. Jesus is precious. To me, is Jesus precious to you? Do you love him with all your heart? Do you love him with all your soul? Are you trusting him to take you to heaven when you die? <clears throat> when I feel disheartened, forsaken, forgotten, Jesus is precious to me. In every condition, he is my physician. Jesus is precious to me. Jesus is precious. Yes, he is so precious. Jesus is precious to me. 
He is my Savior, my Lord, and my Master. Jesus is precious to me. He's comfort in sorrow. He's hope for tomorrow. Jesus is precious to me. He's all that I prayed for. What more could I ask for? Jesus is precious to me. Jesus is precious. Yes, he is so precious. Jesus is precious to me. He is my Savior, my Lord, and my Master. Jesus is precious to me. It's not earthly treasures. It's not worldly pleasures. Jesus is precious to me. And though I prize friendship, thank God for kinship. Amen. Jesus is precious to me. Jesus is precious. Yes, he is so precious. Jesus is precious to me. He is my Savior, my Lord, and my Master. Jesus is precious to me. Amen. Is he precious to you? Amen. Is Jesus precious? Is he all to you? Is he everything that you ever want? Is he everything that you ever need? He is precious. Amen. If you know the Lord. Precious things of God. Is he precious to you? Everyone stand, every head bowed, no one looking around.